Welcome here today. I'm Quexo and today we're going to talk about for me, the series is the SAO of 2023-24. All the things I ever wanted in SAO, well, Shangri-La Frontier got you covered. So let's stop dilly-dangling and let's go into the meat and potatoes. Shangri-La Frontier, or in short, Shanflo, presents itself as a fighting full-dive MMORPG story with power fantasy elements where most of the story is centered about our main character, his Dome who goes into every game he plays by the nickname Sanraku. His Dome is an avid trash game enthusiast who loves to play the Dark Souls type of the full dive VR games, where you need to either complete the almost impossible quest lines with impossible NPC character settings, which makes the games more hard than the Dark Souls franchise, cause the stupidly programmed NPCs makes the stories of the games night impossible. For example, there are fighting games he plays where you use bugs as a part of the combat, like glitching your fist attack so you get extra reach, or medieval games where the devs made the drop rate of items so horrendous that the whole night concept was thrown out the window by the player base and the players just transformed it into a looting simulator with swords. And that was just an example of the kind of games his Tome likes to play. The story begins something like this. After the last game, which he finally completed and got his reward, revenge onto the NPC which made this game so unbearable, he goes into the game shop to get another trash game. But the author had something else prepared for him as the shopkeeper recommended him some away time from the trash games. I mean, if you want to appreciate the trash games you need to play a god tier game once in a while too, right? And that's exactly what happened. So with the new game recommendation of Shangri-La Frontier, the game with 30 million concurrent players and being only one year out, he's automatized right into the game. Well, as a trash game enthusiast who likes to min-max the things in the game, he creates a character with the bare minimum of gear. I mean, he got a headpiece and the money he had, he planned to buy a better gear at the first or second town. And after choosing the wonder side job, he spawned right smack in the middle of the wildness where he gets to experience the god tier combat system of Shangri-La Frontier. Well, that should do it more or less for the introduction of the game and our main character, Torino Atama Sandraku, aka Hizutome. I wanted to talk about the beginning, cause it's just part of the first episode and I really wanted to flesh it out a bit. Firstly, I do think the main character is Kirito Don Wright, cause even if he's a kid and does silly mistakes, we can see he's an avid gamer, even if he has to search the forums, he does not do a total deep dive, cause it is way too much story and text, which a normal teenager would find annoying too. <laughs> I got to say, the world setting switching in between the real world and the game world is done interestingly too. I do like it that most of the time we see the game world and sometimes we see tidbits of the real world, like his Tome having dinner with his family or just being outside and seeing his friends. What I like about the god game Shangri-La is the way how we are introduced to the seven unique bosses. I mean, we do know that there are seven bosses, but we don't even know the names of some of them. From the start of the server, of the game, which is a year already, all of them are currently undefeated, which makes the World Quest main story progress is literally almost zero. What I like about the anime is that we get some takes of other games, like in the first episode, the trash game he finally completed, or Burp, the fantasy fighting game. You know, the one I mentioned before, the one where you use bugs as part of the fighting combos. Thanks to those trashy games, he met some equally interesting characters with which he will later play in Shanflo 2. One of them a model and the other a pro gamer. The pacing of the story and fights is really good and fighting moments don't even get me started. I mean, I do know that in parts of the anime series the fighting animation has its drops, but even still, the fights we get are brilliantly animated and the use of CG is only minimal. Expect some scenes. Just remembering the last big fight is giving me good bumps. Fluid, crisp and energetic fighting sequences with some comedy at the side are making the fights even more compelling. Even more so when Hizutome pushes himself to the limit in some fights. Having that many fighting moments with monsters and players is making the world feel similar to a real MMORPG. Well, there are some funny moments for me, like him needing a physical chip to put into the PC to start up his VR headset like Lmao. <laughs> <laughs> That reminded me of the Japanese are still using floppy disk till today. When I talk about Shanflo, I do have to talk about the music too. The two opening songs are bang rock songs. 
From the first moment I listened to them, I just fell in love. I love them. Like, totally. The band PCMC did a banger job on them. Getting goosebumps on both songs, Broken Games and Danger Danger, I love how they composed both songs. As for the ending songs, the first one is such an underrated action song which, even if it was an opening, I would not be surprised. Second ending song is a mellow song. Just listening to Rihanna sing it is driving me sometimes to tears and the song is not different. So we all know that SAO got its elitization arc which made up for a lot of mistakes. I do gotta give credits where they are due. SAO overall was a pioneer of a lot of full dive VR game titles, from which Shangri-La is one of them. I do not say it is the father of them all, cause there are older series like Dot Hack which precedes SAO by decades. But thanks to the low hate relationship we all have with SAO, it made possible to get more anime adaptations of this kind of genre. I like the main character of Shan Flo more than Kirito, cause he's not an overpowered cheater with unholy reflexes which came out of Kendo. He learns, repeats fights, plans a lot and does what he needs to do. Even if he fails, he tries his best. He feels like a human, like we when we play Dark Souls. I like how he's not an overwhelmingly overpowered character in the game. Not like a certain SAO character, right? Right? Well, back to the topic. His Dome or MC is quite similar to Kirito in some aspects. Well, I do have agree that he's strong and has reflexes like Kirito does, but he isn't portrayed as someone who is only winning or someone who is only focused on winning. If I had to describe someone like Hizutome, he is someone who enjoys the challenges of the game. So having someone like win or lose some fights is normal. When you play games you win some, you lose some. Like in winning soul games, you build up your failures till you get the needed muscle memory or the needed reflexes or a strategy. Compared to Kirito, well Kirito of SAO was more of a woman magnet, god gamer, hacker and so on. Having similar stats to Senraku but way too overpowered for such a game, Kirito gave birth to some cool scenes like the Gleam Eyes fight with his two swords, which we can argue is still iconic till today. Still, we can say that his Dome hadn't had such fights too, for example, which was in episode 3, I say. Episode 3 and we've gotten such an epic fight. But okay, I can't only sing praises on Shanflo. So, for example, I do have my problems with it too. Like the girl which has a crush on his Dome. I mean, I had to google her name, which is Saiga Rei. I mean, I know her in-game nickname of Saigear Zero, cause she's like one of the best players there, the so-called attack holder, but her real-life persona is portrayed as a stalking girl with a crush which is way too shy to even say hello. I mean, come on, that could be written a bit more realistic. Still, the series got me covered on all fronts. From animation, music, fighting sequences and a bit of cinematography at some moments, interesting storytelling and world building, I gotta say I really adore this series. But there are a lot of flaws, like driving out some boring scenes, sometimes the animation drops can be felt, using still images in some episodes, those things can ruin the immersion a bit. For this series I'm anime only, cause I like me to read some manga too, but I will abstain like I did with Jujutsu Kaisen. For me right now, it is a series deserving 9 points out of 10. I can't give it a 10 out of 10 cause of the before mentioned flaws, even if it's true that I'm hyped for every episode and jumping inside my chair like a little kid the moment I press play onto the episodes, for me a 10 out of 10 shows how to connect to my very being. So even if on paper the whole show can be a 10 out of 10 show for some, for other people it is just a 7 out of 10 at most. In the end it's only my subjective take and taste. I really like the genre of games being portrayed in anime. One such a good example is The King's Avatar. As for Shangri-La Frontier, 
with the animation, music, directing and so on, it is possible I will put it up at 10 out of 10 after it finished airing. One reminder, from the 930 anime shows watched or watching, I only have like 16 marked up as 10 out of 10. And this one has a real chance to get there, depending on the next few episodes. Still, most of my 10 out of 10 lists tell a hidden meaning of Ata progressing, never giving up, caring for your teachers and family or just cause it's cool. This season there are two more shows which I'm watching which can get to the point of 10 out of 10 just for the reason that they are that good. I think I will make a video about them so I won't be mentioning them. That should do it, press like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, stay in good health and we will see us in the next video.